And so now we've reached our final checkpoint. Hooray! This checkpoint is pretty much about providing you with some examples of the functions of adult stem cells in different tissues and organs in our body. Specifically, we will look at their role in our central nervous system, the bone marrow, the skin, as well as in the intestine. First up, the central nervous system. Neural stem cells from our central nervous system can give rise to both neurons as well as supporting glial cells to replace those that died. This process by which neurons are created is known as neurogenesis. This process is often associated with learning and memory in mammals, although the exact role of these neurons is still not quite clear. For patients with neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, the discovery of neural stem cells in mammals brings about some hope for a cure for this debilitating chronic disease. Next up, the bone marrow. Blood is a tissue and it contains many different types of specialized cells, each with its own function. This includes red blood, red blood cells for oxygen transport, various types of white blood cells to fight infection, as well as platelets which are involved in blood clotting. These cells have relatively short lifespans and because of this, hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow are needed to ensure the continual replacement of these blood cells. Blood-forming stem cells are used in bone marrow transplantation for diseases that involve the blood, such as leukemia. While transplantation of this bone marrow is usually quite successful, it's mainly the graft versus host disease that usually proves to be fatal, where the donor's immune cells, which are produced by the transplanted bone marrow, start to attack the recipient cells. Let's now move on to the skin. The epidermis is the outer protective layer of our skin. Epidermal cells at the skin surface are constantly being shed from the surface. Epidermal stem cells are found in the basal layer and they will produce new cells called keratin keratinocytes which migrate to the surface of the skin to replace damaged or shed epidermal cells. These epidermal stem cells also give rise to cells forming hair follicles as well as associated glands such as sebaceous glands. Lastly, the epithelium of the small intestine also has stem cells. All vertebrates have a digestive tract with specialized cells for digestion as well as absorption of nutrients. Despite preventive measures such as excess mucal production to prevent the unintentional enzymatic digestion of the gut lining, there are still times where it still happens. Hence, the lining of the gut will have to be replaced by new cells produced by intestinal stem cells. These intestinal stem cells are found deep in the crypts of the epithelium and they give rise to four different types of differentiated cells. Number one, absorptive cells which have densely packed microvilli to increase surface area for absorption. Number two, they give rise to globate cells which are responsible for secreting mucus. Thirdly, they also give rise to pen of cells which are part of the innate immune system secreting lysozymes. And lastly, they also produce enteroendocrine cells, which secrete a whole host of hormones for signaling purposes. So, at this last checkpoint, you should be able to name examples of how stem cells are involved in the normal functioning of particular tissues or organs in our body. And that's the end of the lecture series for stem cells. <laughs>